Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Manny B Investing MBI, and we have a Paribus video for you. Let's take a look. The SEC Wars. Want to take a look at this this uh, blog here from August 18th. Let's go ahead and check it out. Kind of Star Wars themed, and it's going to be about the SEC, probably Gary Gensler. So let's go ahead and blow this up so that you can see it a little bit better. In a scenario reminiscent of the renowned scene in Star Wars, where the walls inexorably close in on Luke Skywalker and his team, Gary Gensler, chair of the Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, seemed to be facing similar pressing confines. Over the past few days, his anti-crypto war has been attacked on three fronts, all of which threaten to depose him. Although platforms such as X have been rife with speculation regarding Gensler's potential departure for some time, the latest developments have significant implications that might compromise his crackdown on prominent players like Coinbase and XRP. Refusing to bow down and settle, Coinbase is up the ante by filing a series of amicus briefs asking the judge to dismiss the case against them. In a, an amicus brief or amicus curiae in Latin literally means friend of the court. These submissions hail from expert external to the core proceedings aiming to provide the court with deeper insights or clarifications on the case's technical aspects. On the 11th of August, the salvo of briefs submitted by Coinbase, including notable names such as Anderson How uh, Harowitz, uh, Paradigm, the Chamber of Digital Commerce, the U.S. Senator Cynthia Loomis. However, a particularly damaging submission for the SEC emerged from a group of distinguished law professors well-versed in securities laws. And it looks like we got some guys from Yale, some, some Ivy Leaguers. Their detailed representation highlights that uh, prece precedence legislation, including the benchmark Howey test, never deemed a scheme without a contract as an investment contract. They argue this elemental component a contractual agreement concerning future gains has remained a defining attribute of investment contracts. They state, not surprisingly, no decision of the Supreme Court or the Second Circuit has ever found that a scheme that does not involve a contract could qualify as an investment contract. Likewise, none of the surveyed state law cases, including those cited by Howie, um, held that an investment contract existed without a contract undertaking regarding later proceeds. That has been the key ingredient distinguishing investment contracts from other arrangements since the term first appeared in the Blue Sky Laws, in Howie itself, and ever since then. Interestingly, this perspective resonates with the recent Ripple Labs versus SEC case judgment which the SEC is presently trying to overturn. However, this week, Ripple Labs submitted a motion to deny the SEC a right to appeal this aspect of the case before a final judgment is reached on the entire case. So the SEC is just trying to play dirty, and Ripple Labs is doing what they're doing best and defending themselves uh, and honestly defending the whole of the crypto uh, experience in all of the, the fintech companies connected in the crypto world. So this is a really big case. This is going to be case law. The decisions are going to be made um, about other situations in crypto based on what happens with Ripple Labs. So please pay attention. Please do not take this lightly just because you may or may not like XRP or Ripple Labs. This would have devastating effects on the SEC's present path of regulation by enforcement. Both motions seek to refute the SEC's views that digital assets are by themselves securities. Should separate judges rule against the SEC on this point, Gensler's position would be seriously undermined. While there's a general perception in some quarters that the SEC might lack proficiency or comprehension of law, it's critical to recognize that the SEC is far from inept. It's plausible that they understand digital assets don't inherently qualify as securities. This may explain why they've made it practically impossible for anyone to register with them. One exception, 
to this is Prometheum, who recently passed the registration process to become a special purpose broker dealer, SPBD. The unusual circumstances around this approval haven't escaped scrutiny. Patrick McHenry, chairman of the Financial Services Committee, or FSC, has pinned a letter to Gensler demanding clarity on this anomaly. He wrote, The timing and circumstances surrounding the approval of Prometheum as the first SBBD raises serious questions. The approval comes as the committee is considering addressing gaps in the regulation of digital assets. Adding, the timing of the approval raises concerns that it was aimed at demonstrating that legislation is not needed because there is a workable regulatory framework for the custody of digital asset securities. In fact, you have touted the Prometheum approval multiple times in public statements to support your position that digital assets firm that a digital assets firm can comply with existing regulatory frameworks at the SEC. The letter concludes Pursuant to the committee's oversight authority of the exchange of the Securities and Exchange Commission, please provide all documents and communications between and among SEC employees related or referring to Prometheum's application to become a special purpose broker dealer as soon as possible, but no later than 5 p.m. August 22nd, 2023. As each week passes, time seems to be running out for the SEC's present approach of aggressive enforcement against crypto. Should the commission need to change direction or tone, it seems highly implausible that Gensler would be able to remain as chairman. Hmm. While some may claim that his time is already up, we have yet to see what moves he has left. One thing's for certain, he won't stop his attack on crypto without a fight, but at least now, politicians in the courts are starting to take the fight to him. I think Gary Gensler is a puppet, to a puppet administration that is destroying the planet as we speak. They are very much could be compared to the Star Wars. They are the Empire. Uh, this guy sat on it, sat in a class and preached about how awesome digital assets were, went to work, went back to work for the federal government, and is now doing the evil biddings of the Biden administration, trying to make all digital assets illegal trying to make everyone that holds digital assets a felon. The SEC literally does the same thing that the ATF does with firearms owners. Literally everything that is happening to the crypto world has already happened to the firearms world. Do not give them an inch. I don't care what it is. I disagree. I will never, ever ever go with what they say or what they believe because more than likely it's a lie. They lie about everything. They lie to get laws passed. And then when laws get passed that they don't like, they ignore them. And then there's no repercussion for them. I don't like this guy. He's a snake. He plays both sides. And when he's out at the sec, hopefully we get a new president, but I doubt it. Um, He's still probably going to be there. This whole idea that he's going to be gone, uh, I just don't believe it. The mission of this administration is to hold back crypto and destroy it if they can, which I don't think they can, uh, but they're going to do a lot to drive the price down and drive people out of it uh, by, by, by just doing some really messed up things, uh, using their, their media powers uh, to, to push these negative narratives telling people to stay away because what they don't want is they do not want another crypto explosion. They do not want a bunch of Americans making a lot of money off of crypto because this undermines their control of our economy. But what do you think about this? Don't mean to get too preachy, but I got a little bit fired up. Uh, let me know how you feel about this in the comment section uh, and make sure you hit that like, you hit the share and you subscribe. And then I'll see you on the next one. Peace.